All right, here's a quick one. I want to 3D print a pegboard hook, but not exactly. This one almost works, but for my Hoto hammer, it doesn't fit. And I don't want to buy a pack of 10 and I don't want to go hunting for an STL. I just want one hook that actually fits my tool and I can 3D print it right now. The issue is the hook of this radius is too small and our hammer is 22 millimeters across and it won't seat properly. I'm going to reverse engineer this hook and customize it in Fusion. So the first step, I'm going to take a photo of the existing hook, bring it into Fusion using the canvas tool. Make sure my unit's makes sense millimeter do s for search and go find the canvas i click insert from my computer i go find the original jpeg i do um just as an aside i use google photo when i take photos they automatically sync from my phone making life a little bit faster i can just grab them right off the web and download them i go to the front face and drop in our canvas this looks flipped so i'm going to come over to the vertical placement here vertical mirror and actually the horizontal and we'll flip it over this looks great click ok i don't don't know the scale so I'm going to be sure to calibrate it because my grid pattern are 10 millimeter increments I can kind of guess that or I measure Come over to canvas on the browser here right click and choose calibrate and I'm going to calibrate between two known points I'm going to start a sketch create a sketch on this face and now I can effectively trace it. And in the canvas, we do have the ability to adjust how it shows up. So if I right click and do edit canvas again, this is where you can adjust the transparency. So if you'd like to make it like it more opaque, you can turn it down just to make it easier to work with and kind of play with this value. If we take a quick look at the help menu, you can see these options like display through, selectable, renderable. So now I'm gonna start sketching and I'm okay with with my 3D print to do this kind of flat edges compared to rounded all over. I'm okay if it's flat on a couple sides and even these sides that interact, I'm okay with that. I don't need it to be perfectly rounded like the original. It's worth noting that in Fusion, that if you were to just sketch some lines, let me just hack something together real quick here over here. So here's a rough shape with just the lines and arcs. You can do this and extrude that. Fusion allows you to do that if we now do finish sketch hit extrude go to this thin extrude we can do just this shape and extrude depth to this value so we'll set it up it's going to apply a thickness to the wall either to one side both sides or evenly as well as we can set a distance too so if i said the walls are three and it's three deep let's look at this we can see that it's extruding that so this is really nice and quick and powerful allowing you to do extrudes quickly from you know sketch lines because i'm trying to reverse engineer this and i want to play with this value i'm not going to fight with the thin extrude but instead i'm going to go to the trouble of just kind of sketching the rest of it i got i jumped out of my sketch so i'm going to right click and edit sketch i'm going to do a three point arc here and do just a kind of a close match and this is the value this is where we want to redesign it. the hammer that we know about is roughly 20 millimeters i think so let me remeasure that okay so 21 millimeters is what i want to accommodate instead of if i click on this line it can handle roughly 14 right i if i want the hammer to rest nicely at the bottom of this arc then i probably want to i'm going to do an arc here come over i'm just going to sketch a line going across it's horizontal hit x that will make it a construction geometry just so it's more of a reference and we'll place a dimension on it just so i know what sit right there and let's go a little bit further. I'm going to go out pretty far, do something like 41 so I can even take larger designs maybe to, on the pegboard. We can start kind of big here and work from there and see if we like it. So it's totally okay to take a few tries at this and iterate at this. In fact, that's how I try to always consider this, that my first one is just going to give me some great feedback. So I try to get my print as fast as possible when I'm working with Fusion for my first design. Everything about the design I was working on was just off and I need that first prototype to give me that feedback. Next, let's do another arc. Hit S, arc, three point arc roughly there these i want them to be concentric so they have the same center the arcs kind of align with each other this looks pretty good the rest of this i'm going to try to just reverse engineer and go from there i'm just kind of roughing this out
do a three point arc here, run it in. There we go. So threw this together really fast and now we'll hit extrude. Quick glance, you can see that I did not connect these so I can either stretch this line up here, make sure they connect. The profile is now showing, that's great. That means that it is a closed shape and can be extruded without me doing any repair. I'm gonna come up to isometric on the view and let's do a depth. I'm looking for about four millimeters depth to, for, to try this out, click OK. Let's hide the canvas. How's this look? It looks OK. Everything about this is fine and workable for now. We can always improve it on the second pass. I'm going to save it. Pegboard. Quick save. And now if I go up to 3D print, I'm sending this to my Bamboo Studio. I click OK. It's going to launch Bamboo Studio. Choose Lay on Flat Face and try to select one of these faces here. Slice it. Looks good. It's going to take 10 minutes. After the 3D print, it looks really snug, snaps into place nicely, and the hammer hangs. This looks great. We can make some small adjustments to make it a little bit looser if we wanted, but we're good to go. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys in the next video.